another episode of Katie's Corner, episode 10 to be exact, presented by Godzilla Media and sponsored by Mohawk Honda, which, you know, we'll talk about them in a second, but also want to introduce our new friends over at SeatGeek. This summer, if you're looking to buy tickets to your favorite band, sports team, venue, or more, remember to buy your tickets at SeatGeek. Visit SeatGeek.com to search for the event you want to buy tickets. And if your total ticket buys over 50 bucks, use promo code GOZ, G-O-Z, you get 20 bucks off your purchase. That's right. Any ticket purchase over 50 bucks from SeatGeek.com, use promo code G-O-Z, get 20 bucks off your order. That simple. Now, we kind of started a little theme last week with uh, Matt Zumbelow, the social media coordinator director thingamabobber i don't know what were we calling him meg but um he's uh from the amsterdam mohawks so basically i've i've, I've twisted this so that you know shameless plug the amsterdam mohawks they're who i do pa announcing for so we're just, we're just gonna call this the mohawk minute i guess every week um so joining me uh for a second week this is from the amsterdam mohawks the brand new Assistant General Manager of the Mohawks, Megan Anagnostopoulos. Megan, how are you doing today? I'm good, Brian. Doing good. Getting ready for the game tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I was a little disappointed about Tuesday being postponed, but, you know, it's whatever. You know, rain happens. It is yep. what it is. Um, first things first, let's just kind of go back to when you were a kid, like, being involved in sports with, and we'll get through everything you've been with uh, as far as your internships and your jobs, but as far as when you were a kid growing up, uh, did you always think you, you were going to be involved with sports and working with sports teams, or is this something that kind of just developed over your time through high school and college? Yeah, ever since I was a little kid, I've always played sports, um, whether it was soccer, basketball, I did t-ball and then went up onto softball did a little bit of cross too. I knew I always wanted to do something in sports. And then when I realized that I could work in sports, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, I knew that being around sports always made me happy. Um, despite the losses, the injuries and stuff like that, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, my original goal was I wanted to be a physical education teacher. And then once I realized that I had to do a lot of science with that, um, take a biology class, I said, no, thank you. And I picked the next route, which was sports management. Yeah. Through my time doing PA announcing, a lot of the stuff I've been doing is college basketball. And the, the pop, one of the more popular majors is always something centered around like physical therapy, yep. stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, I – I, I, I say good on anyone who can get through all those science classes because I'm certainly not a science guy myself either. So Same. It, it's all good. Um, now, if I remember correctly, you went to Johnstown High yep. School? Okay. Yep. Um, so let me just bring this up real quick then. I mean, obviously you've seen the evolution of the athletic program at the high school, good or bad, indifferent. Um, and you're still, you know, in the area. Um, relatively speaking, you know, you're still within the, you know, Fulton Montgomery area. How do you feel about things that have been happening with that athletic program? And do you think things are starting to get better? Like what's, what's your take on everything going on there? Yeah. So when I was in high school, we had to cut our lacrosse program because there wasn't enough girls to play. Um, so I kind of witnessed that to a degree. Um, it was upsetting. It was all, that was the one sport that all of my friends played together because um, in the fall, half of us did soccer, half of us did field hockey. In the winter, some of us played basketball, some didn't. And then springtime, it was lacrosse. That's when we were all together and we had the most fun, but we just didn't have the numbers after the graduating class before us. Uh, so that was a little heartbreaking. And then during, when I was in college, that's when the budget got cut at Johnstown and I'm not going to lie to you, it got me so upset to the point where tears were in my eyes. I went to the um, fundraiser that they had where they raised thousands and thousands of dollars. And seeing that and seeing the athletes, it gives me chills now talking about it, seeing the athletes trying to come up with the money, knowing that it was in their hands to figure out if they were going to play that next season, uh, that next fall, um, a vivid thing that gets brought up in my head a lot talking about this is when our girls lacrosse team won sectionals they 
um, Taryn Ringer and Emily Fleming were in tears because they didn't know if they were going to have a season next season. They didn't know what was going to be next. So real, to rewind a little bit, so you're trying to tell me you were a three-sport athlete? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes. <laughs> now, never mind. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, because I remember constantly reading about it, and just it's – it's just kind of weird the whole state of high school athletics in general with programs merging or mm-hmm. programs cutting certain sports and having budgets cut. It's do you feel like now over the last few years things are do you feel like things are improving at all? All in all, as far as Johnstown specifically, not necessarily at large in this whole section, but as far as Johnstown specifically, how do you feel things are going like the last few years? I think they're um on the upward um, angle, but I think they're playing more, um, local teams now and not traveling as far, which helps obviously with bus drivers, gas, the whole nine yards. But, um, I think it's definitely going up. We're not going to talk about gas. We're not going to talk about (laughs) that. It's like that. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just, yeah, no. Um, (laughs) I, I almost had my heart break when I drove by some gas prices last night. Uh, but anyway, so you get out of high school and you end up going to SUNY Brockport. Was that one of your main schools that you're looking into? Were there other schools you were considering at the time? Yeah, I looked, I narrowed it down to two. It was Brockport and um, Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, both were interested in me playing basketball there. Um, so that was a big deciding factor. And then why I chose Brockport was because um, I stepped on campus and I realized that if I didn't become an, if something happened where I couldn't play basketball, an injury, um, something like that, I knew I was still going to enjoy being at this school, still love the school, the atmosphere and everything like that. That's why I initially chose Brockport. So you end up going to Brockport and you majored in sports management, minor in business, admin and coaching, not PT. Good job on you. Smart girl. <laughs> um, you know, and, and but the thing is, when you were at SUNY Brockport, you got to work at the Ripken Experience in Myrtle Beach. Yep. Uh, I can't even imagine that. Like, how did that all work out for you? How did that uh, how did that even fall in your lap like that? Uh, so I. I was going to, I have a crisis. Let's call it that. Like, okay, what's the next step? What am I going to do? I can't rely on basketball anymore. I can't rely on playing anymore. What's the next step? So it was a hard decision, but I decided to not play my senior year of basketball in college. And I decided to focus on myself and my career, what the next step was. So it was September of my senior year and I am applying for everything and anything internship wise, because with my degree, I had to complete uh, a 14 week internship and I knew I wanted to go somewhere else. Um, Myrtle beach was the farthest I knew I was going to go. So I was applying there um, everywhere on the East coast and I got the email back about the Ripken experience. And I just knew that's where I wanted to go. I, my family vacationed in Myrtle beach for like every year that I can remember. So I was familiar with the area. And then I knew a lot about baseball from interning at the Mohawks that I knew that it's something that I would really enjoy. I mean, Myrtle Beach, there are much worse places to intern at. So Right, exactly. That's not too shabby. Uh, Megan and Agnostopoulos, the assistant general manager for the Amsterdam Mohawks of the Perfect Game Collegiate Baseball League. Join me here on Katie's Corner, uh, part of Godzilla Media, also sponsored by Mohawk, Conda, and SeatGeek. Um, and then you end up going to ODU, Old Dominion, yeah. down in Norfolk. Very familiar with the... Uh, the Norfolk, Virginia Beach, that whole area down there. So good on you. And uh, you actually ended up working with the uh, USCAA. Actually, if I remember, I want to say your last grad year there was my first year with the Mohawks, maybe? Anyways, 2019, does that sound right? Yeah, that was my first year there. That was my first year there. That was your first year there, okay. Um, What was the experience like working with the USCAA and uh, their marketing team? It was awesome. It was... I, when I took the position, I didn't know exactly what the USCA was and learning that and going to all the tournaments and seeing the kids 
or the student athletes that we put on these tournaments for that wouldn't be able to make it to the NCAA tournaments. Um, seeing that, and they're so grateful for what we did and what they still do, that it was just, it made all of the endless hours and the work worth it once we gave the national championship trophy to them. So an interesting time comes up for you because you finish up your master's work with ODU. You're hanging around with the Mohawks also doing, you know, working back home in the, uh, in the Johnstown area. Um, but there's a, there's a place that I'm sensing is very near and dear to your heart that has absolutely nothing to do with sports. And I'm, I'm going to give them a shameless plug. It's called the winner's circle. Tell me about like what's so endearing to you about Winter Circle and and like how special that place seems to be for you. Yeah, so um, twenty seven years ago now, my parents and my father's um, parents and so my Mimi and pops they opened up the Winter Circle, um, just the four of them. And they figured out how to do it, which is just so humbling to me. And they started out with nothing and now they grew it into the local spot. And we have our regulars, we have new people that come in and it's just amazing to see how much it evolved throughout the years. And especially um, when I was in second grade, second grade, the restaurant burnt down completely. Um, and it burnt down in March and we were back open by July. And the only people that worked were volunteers. Um, we didn't pay everyone and it just um, shows how much we've put out to the community and how much they give back to us. Um, and it's truly amazing to see how far my parents have come to make it what it is now. Well, that is a crazy story about what happened with the fire. That That's wow. That's amazing. <laughs> it, it's, it's crazy what happens when the community is, is standing behind and supporting something like that, especially a, a family business. It's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, now, during that, so you're you're helping out with the restaurant, you're helping out the Mohawks, and you're you kind of seem kind of at a crossroads a little bit, and then you get a phone call. It's like, hey, we're at well at the time, so the Times Union Center. Yep. Um, we're looking for people to help us out, and uh, you end up signing on and um, being part of the team to help put together the new lacrosse team, the Albany Firewolves. Um, what was, what was that process like? And, and how did you feel about uh, helping out with the Firewolves getting off the ground? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a new experience um, having a team that came, they were already in uh, Mohegan Sun, but they were relocating to Albany. Um, the last time the Albany had a lacrosse team was the Firebirds. So it was something new, back to the area. Um, I took the job and I was so excited. It was my first full-time full -time job ever. Um, and I knew I wanted to get going to see how that ran, like how a new team coming into the area, how they would run, how they would, as far as get people there to get them to decide what their ticket prices is. All of that was just all a learning experience to me. And it was really cool to see how that all panned out. So I, I'm going to ask a question and I, it's totally meant to be a, a smart ass the way I ask it. <laughs> why, why the hell do you keep? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> not screwed. I'll ask it. Oh. Is there a certain person or uh, an atmosphere to it that has kept drawing you back to the Mohawks year after year. And the, like, I, I mean that in the most sincere, like joking way. Like I'm not trying to be a, a smart, ass, uh, um, you know, an ass about it at all, but it's just like, cause I've seen the work that gets involved and we'll get into your new position in a second. But like, I mean, you went from being an intern to running group sales for a couple years there. I mean, what drew you? I mean, obviously, sports is a part of it, but mm -hmm. like, aside from that, what what drew you in initially to the Mohawks, and what made you keep coming back the next few years, ultimately into the position you're in now? I think it really is around the community, and that 
between our season ticket holders, our um, sponsors, just what they give and that atmosphere that we create and seeing the kids smile is just makes it all worth it. Like Saturday night was absolutely crazy. And um, with the amount of people were there, the kids were there, the Fonda Little League brought out everyone and anyone and so thankful for that. And I was at the restaurant yesterday and they parents were coming up to me thanking me and saying how well of a job we did. And it really makes it worth it just knowing that we're providing to our community, the community that I grew up in, that I can give back to them and give these kids the opportunity to come to a sporting event, to enjoy it and to hopefully hold on to it. And they're taking their little league days and just keep moving forward. And now it's evolved into you taking on a new role starting this season, the assistant general manager of the Amsterdam Mohawks. Now, uh, the the, uh, the smart ass in me would say basically your job is whatever general manager Brian Spagnola doesn't want to do. <laughs> but um, in, in, in all seriousness, though, just like because people, I think, mistake that being a just because the team only plays two, two and a half months out of the year, people think, oh, they probably start working like a month before the season and work like a few weeks after the season. That's it. It's not at all like that. <laughs> um, uh, just kind of talk things over about like r- roughly what your duties are typically like day to day. Yeah. Like just go through that if you want. Yeah, that's funny that you said that because a lot of people, they're like, oh, what do you do now? And I say, I'm the assistant general manager of the Amsterdam Mohawks. They're like, well, that's only going to be a couple months. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's a whole year worth of work. And I've said it to Brian Spagnola a lot. And I say, how, how did you do this? How did you do this for a one-man show? Because uh, I'm busy every day. It's not like I sit around and wait. Um, so a little intro to what I do daily. Um So I started on in March and that was really focusing on the sponsors, fulfilling all their needs, making sure that they were getting what they want to get and what we want to give, what we want to make sure they're getting everything that they put in. So it was filling their packages as far as tickets, signage, making sure that was all set, um, essentially figuring out what would make them happy and want them to come back year after year. Um, And then that was after that was all put aside, not put aside, but finish, even though I'm still working on it because we're gaining sponsors each and every day, which is amazing, Um, was trying to figure out these little league groups, the books or the book, the game dates, themes, all of that, Um, getting in contact with them, getting classroom MVPs out to the games, um, as well as still booking the sponsorships, deck parties and such that are in their packages. And let me tell you, well, inside baseball here, <laughs> inside baseball, um, as some, cause, okay. So with your being a director of group sales last season in 2021, um, just because of the fact that you were with the firewolf still at the time over the TU center, it was like a weird conglomerate. Like you were obviously running group sales stuff, but like, um, myself and the interns and, uh, Barry, who we're going to talk about in a second, um, you know, it, we got to see like the fruits of your labor, like trying to read through the spreadsheet, read through emails and stuff like that. So uh, even just in that little bit of uh, insight from last season, folks, if you really want to know, ask me, email me, brian.katie.gazillamedia.com. I'll show you the damn spreadsheet from 2021. <laughs> it's oh, the amount of tabs alone. I sh- yeah, no, yep. <laughs> no, bless you. Um, but I, I just mentioned quickly, I didn't want to bring up one person in particular. Um, it's somebody that is uh, pretty beloved, not just in the Mohawks community, but in the Amsterdam community in, in general, Barry Rouse. He always offers a unique relationship, with, particularly with you and me and, and the, the people that he, he, he works with season after season. Just, Talk a little bit about your relationship with Barry and what you feel like he means to the Mohawks community at large. Yeah. So when I was an intern four years ago now, um, he kind of takes charge of the interns um, as far as on-field events and such. He's kind of the man that figures out what's going to happen, when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. 
And as an intern, you walk into a new internship and you're scared. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. It's a learning experience. And very, really, um, for me and all the other interns, walks you through that process. He gets you over that little hump that you're scared and will get you out on the field. He'll get you throwing T-shirts, giving out stuff, talking to people. Um, and by the end of the season, I was out on the field doing the floss challenge. Like, And I never would have done that ever, 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 ever would have done that. Um, and he just – he greets everyone with open arms and just um, make sure everyone's comfortable and hears them out. Um, if they're not comfortable, they'll he'll figure out a way to make this experience worthwhile for an intern, even for the workers too. Um, he's there for you. And now that I'm in this new role, um, when we're, when I'm struggling, trying to find a contact, trying to find um, a, a solution to a problem, I give him a call. And he always greets my phone calls with something funny, um, whether it's a funny hello, whether it's a sarcastic joke. Um, I just know that he's always there for me and for everyone else in this organization. And he brings you iced coffee as many times as he can. So that, that always helps out the, the cause that way. Yes, that helps a lot. <laughs> uh, um, so real quick, we have, as we're uh, recording this and we're going to put this out on Thursday, June 9th, we have a game coming up tomorrow night against Oneonta. Um, and I believe we're looking at, what, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, I believe, next week. Yes. So a lot of opportunities. You can come on out. Ralph Family Stadium, Shuttleworth Park in Amsterdam. Um, it's a great time, I must say. Since uh, I started there, this is my – I started in 2019, but uh, 2020, things were weird, so I – ended up not working during that but so this is my third season officially doing announcing for the mohawks and i must say um you're obviously an all-star everybody knows it and um i'm pretty i'm pretty sure i speak for everyone on the staff that uh says um we appreciate all the hard work you do and oh by the way happy birthday thank you <laughs> your birthday was yesterday and i just wanted to make sure i Put that in there just to embarrass you a little bit. So Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Megan and Agnostopoulos, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, we all appreciate you. And I look forward to uh, your accurate game scripts the rest of the season. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> no problem. That was Megan and Agnostopoulos, Assistant General Manager of the Amsterdam Mohawks. If you want more information throughout the season of uh, promotions, ticket sales, game dates and times. Um, per Game Collegiate Baseball League is a great league. They're, they're always doing great stuff at Amsterdam. And if opening night from last Saturday is any sign of what this season is going to be, whew, come on out. I'm telling you. It was standing room only opening night. And we had another great crowd this past Monday. So come on out. AmsterdamMohawks.com. If you want more information online or visit Amsterdam Mohawks on Facebook, um, always updating the Facebook and the website constantly with game dates and information and things of the sort. That all being said, let me just talk real quick about our friends over at Mohawk Honda. Doing great things this summer. You know, they are, they got everything you need. If you want brand new 2022s, if you're looking at maybe a certified pre-owned used vehicle that fits your budget and lifestyle the best way possible, even 2020s and 2021s on the lot over there in Scotia, Glenville, the team over there can find what you're looking for by searching the lot, or they can even look for vehicles off their lot if you want to as well. But the real opportunity right now is either trading in or selling your vehicle. As Mohawk Honda buys cars, and in some cases, you may even be able to sell it to them for more than you even paid for it. Listen, I'm just telling you the way it is. If you don't believe me, go check them out over at Scotia Glenville at Mohawk Honda. The supply chain still facing challenges, which creates a selling opportunity for you at Mohawk Honda. As always, the team there will make the buying and selling experience very easy, whether it's Cars with Kern, our man Luis, the VIP man Morales, Trust Trav Landry, C-Mac, yeah, Cam McKenna, he's still there, deal with Deanna Cowles, or just talk to the main man, talk to the GM, Greg Johnson. They will help you out over at Freeman's Bridge Road in Scotia, Mohawk Honda. They want to buy your car, and they also want to set you up with a new 
or certified premium used vehicle that fits your budget or lifestyle. Mohawk Condo, where they always go out of their way to please you. That being said, we take a look here at Major League Baseball. Boston Red Sox, they are doing the damn thing. They are working their butts off to try and get back into the swing of things. They're over 500. They find themselves in a pretty decent spot now, crawling. Now, they're still 11 and a half back in the division just because the Yankees continue to play so well. First team in the majors to get to 40 wins. So that is what it is. Um, but Nick Pavetta winning his last five starts in a row. They're putting together wins against teams they should beat. And they're doing it all. They're doing it different ways. They're doing it by slugging the ball out of the ballpark. And they're doing it with some great pitching as well, including Nate Eovaldi pitching uh, a shutout last night, one nothing against the Angels. Now, yes, I know this is an Angels team that's that had Mike Trout leave during the game. That's dealing with a manager change and things are just not going with the organization. Angels have lost 14 in a row. But hey, you beat the teams that are put in front of you. That's the best way to do it. And there's no other way to say it. You know, the Red Sox continue to do the work. And it, that is what it is. You, you can't knock them for that. You just can't. And this is a team now where if they keep creeping themselves in contention for a wild card, which they are right now, you take a look right now, the top two wild card spots are Toronto and Tampa Bay, who are separated by a game of each other. And then there's Boston, three and a half back of Tampa Bay for that second wild card spot. And the next closest team is, what, three to four games behind the Red Sox. So Boston find themselves in a very – perfect position as far as the wild card is concerned whether or not they find themselves in the midst of the AL East race if the Yankees cool off really bad and the Red Sox keep just motoring along that's another to another topic for another day but in the meantime they have put themselves in the perfect spot heading into the start of summer transitioning out of the spring into the summer and getting themselves potentially in a very key wild card race as it looks for the Mets, a week of scary moments. Oh, by the way, for the uh, Red Sox, uh, Matt Barnes to the IL with right shoulder inflammation. I did forget to mention that real quick. Uh, for the Mets, you got Francisco Lindor hurting his finger by shutting a hotel door on it. He misses a game, but he's playing through it now. Max Scherzer, while recovering from his injury on the IL, he had spit on the pitching hand by his dog. Thankfully, not going to hamper his rehab process. You take a look at... Uh, Pete Alonzo, he he has uh, an issue. He missed his last night's game against the Padres, but says he's, he shouldn't need a visit to the IL. Sterling Marte had a quad issue. Also missed last night's game in San Diego, but he also tells the media shouldn't land him on the IL. Just a lot of little scary moments, but in the grand scheme of things, nothing crazy yet. Yet being the operative word. Um, but you see this team, they still put in the work. They're still getting things done. They take two out of three at San Diego. They're off today. Eduardo Escobar goes and hits for the cycle Monday night in San Diego. Hello, Eduardo. Um, you split four at the Dodgers last weekend, which if you had asked me going into the season in, in early April, if I ever thought there was a chance the Dodgers and Mets would split a four-game series the first weekend of June, I would have called you crazy. But the way this Mets team is playing, the way Buck Showalter has this team grooving, they keep doing all the right things, little and big, at the right time. Even Carlos Carrasco is putting out gems here and there. It's it's remarkable what this squad is doing. They're putting in the work, plain and simple. Um, I know it's a phrase I use for the Red Sox, but it, it applies to the Mets as well. I mean, best record in the National League going into la play last night, and they still are. They're a game and a half clear of the Dodgers for best record in the National League, 38-20 and 20 versus the Dodgers, 35-20. and 20, And they just took two out of three from a team that's 34-22, and 22, only a, uh, a game and a half behind the Dodgers in the Padres. So, like, this is a squad where if you don't believe – they have a legitimate shot. If you don't believe that yet, you need to start believing because this Mets team just keeps trucking along. And then we finally get to the Yankees. Listen, you can't win them all. You know, you, you, you beat up, you beat up the lowly teams over the last week and over the weekend. You take the first game in Minnesota. 
When Jamison Tyone doesn't really have his best stuff, last night Cortez doesn't have his best stuff, and the Yankees couldn't hit. It is what it is. You split the first two games. The rubber game is tonight in Minnesota. You know, but you take a look at this. Going back to uh, including Tuesday night's win over Minnesota, the Yankees are now 22-1 and lifetime when Judge and Stanton hit a home run in the same game. 22-1. and That's pretty good. Um, Aaron Judge's world, we just live in it. That That's the long and short of it. Like, if, if Aaron Judge does not win MVP at the rate he's going now, it's a damn shame. Damn shame. Now, is there potential for somebody from the Red Sox, like a Devers or a Bogarts or a J.D. Martinez, potentially? Maybe. Shohei, maybe, just because he has that special two-way factor to him. But right now, it, if the ALMVP isn't Aaron Judge, then I don't want to talk to you. Like, I just, I just don't want to talk to you. Um, and even despite Cortez and Tyone having struggles the last couple nights in Minnesota, the starting rotation is still remarkable. Despite what Cortez did last night against the Twins, he still has an ERA under two for the season. That's right, two. He has a 196 ERA. Like, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. You know, here's the only thing that scares me right now about the New York Yankees at this point. Um. I've been on the record a number of times to say that it's good what's going on with the Yankee lineup, even though certain people having struggles are more frustrating than others. Because you don't want everyone to be hot at the same time, because usually that means they're going to be cold at the same time. And that's something even Aaron Boone said earlier in the season. So the one thing that worries me right now about the Yankees is that the rotation, generally speaking, they're all clicking on all cylinders right now at the same time. And it almost worries you a little bit because you're kind of wondering when the other foot's going to drop in a way. I mean, combined, they're 21 and 5 on the year. Cole's 5 and 1. Tyone, 6 and 1. Cortez, 5 and 1. Uh, actually, 5 and 2, excuse me. Um, Jordan Montgomery is 1 and 1. Severino, 4 and 1. Cortez is the area, like I said, 196. Cole, 278. Tyone, 273. Montgomery, just over three at 302. Seve, just under three at 295. You know, it's... These numbers are insane. They're insane. And if you're a Yankees fan, you're a little reserved about it because, again, it makes you kind of worry if another foot's going to drop at some point. Now, real quick, take a look at the schedules for all the teams going forward. Red Sox schedule coming up. They have their finale at the Angels tonight on the West Coast. I think it's like a 940 start time, if I remember correctly. Then they play three in Seattle over the weekend before coming home for three against the Athletics Monday through Wednesday. For the Mets, uh, off today. Then they play three at the Angels Friday through Sunday. Off Monday. So two days off in a five-day span. Then they play home against the Brewers Tuesday through Thursday at City Field. For the Yankees, there's a quick road trip. They went on the road for three at Minnesota, including tonight's finale. Then they come home for three against the Cubbies Friday through Sunday. Off on Monday as well, just like the Mets. And then they host the Rays Tuesday through Thursday at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx next week. Uh, one quick thing I just want to bring up. Uh, it's ama- You're seeing the... The good and the bad that can happen when a manager is let go. Uh, the Phillies let go of Joe Girardi. They put Rob Thompson in. Um, let's just face it, team morale, not very good at all. Not good at all with that Philly squad. They let Girardi go as uh, he was disappointing with a team that there was more expected out of going into the season. And what do you know? Rob Thompson takes over. They've now won six in a row, including a 10 nothing drubbing of the Brewers last night with Aaron Nola pitching uh, a shutout, now improving to four and four on the year. If the Phillies can find their stride, they do have a roster that can contend with the Mets and Braves in the season. And the Phillies are slowly now. Obviously, the Mets are so far ahead you can't think about them yet. But right now, I mean, you have St. Louis and San Diego in the two wild card spots. After that, though. I mean, St. Louis is 32 and 24. The Phillies are 26 and 29. They're not that far off. 
and it's only June. There's a lot of time left. There's four months of games left. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Meanwhile, on the other side of it, the Angels fired Joe Madden after losing, I think it was 11 or 12 games in a row when they fired him. They put Phil Nevin in charge, and they're still losing. They're now up to a 14-game losing streak after losing to the Red Sox uh, both Tuesday and Wednesday nights. Now, it's not to say Phil Nevin's going to be a crappy manager and the Angels are going to crap out and finish dead last in the West. That's not what I'm saying, necessarily. But it just goes to show... Sometimes it's more than just the manager. Um, and I kind of, and I, I, in a way, I feel bad for Joe Madden because I loved Joe Madden when he was the Rays manager, even as a Yankees fan. I, I loved him. I just loved him as a manager in, in a way that I, I, I wish that we had Joe Madden sometimes instead of Joe Girardi. Um, I love Joe Madden with the Cubs, won them a World Series. Uh, first times in over 100 years they won a World Series thanks to Joe Madden. Great stuff there. Him and Theo Epstein made a great team. Um, and I thought the Angels, it, it was a good fit. I thought it was a real good fit. And just things, I guess, didn't work out. But uh, obviously, I hope Girardi and Madden both find you know their feet firm on the ground. Um, whether or not Girardi or Madden get another job as a manager, I don't know. Um, I'll tell you one guy, though, deserves to be looked at, who I think has been severely overlooked the last few years uh, and has been trolling as a third base coach for the Atlanta Braves. That's Ron Washington. I think Ron deserves another shot. I really do. Uh, he, I think he was terrific with the Rangers when he was with them, and he deserves another shot and somehow has not. Like I, I think Ron Washington is the man somewhere come 2023. So mark my words right now, Ron Washington for 2023 as a manager in Major League Baseball, it's got to happen. Somewhere, somehow, it's got to happen. That all being said, that takes care of Katie's Corner, sponsored by our friends at uh, um, Mohawk Honda and SeatGeek, and presented by Godzilla Media. If you're checking this out on YouTube, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the Godzilla Media channel. If you're checking this out on Google Play or Spotify or anywhere else you get your audio-only podcasts, make sure you rate the podcast, subscribe to the podcast, ring the notification bell on those platforms and YouTube even. That way you know anytime Katie's Corner hits the airwaves for you to check out. And don't forget, at Twitter, at Brian K, that's me, B-R-I-A-N-C-A-D-Y. Any questions, comments, concerns, brian.katie at godzillamedia.com. It's also been scrolling the bottom of the screen if you're watching on YouTube the whole time. So check me out. That all being said, uh, enjoy a great week of baseball, and hopefully we'll catch you at some Mohawks games. Thanks again to Megan and Agnes Stopless for stopping by the new assistant general manager of the squad. Again, AmsterdamMohawks.com for more information or check out the Amsterdam Mohawks on Facebook. That being said, that wraps episode 10 of Katie's Corner. We'll check you out next time. See you, folks.